One Piece, Zoro's 10 Best Sword Fights, Ranked. While he hasn't quite proven himself like he wants to, these fights still show that Roranoa Zoro is one of the best swordsmen in One Piece. As potentially the second best fighter among the Straw Hats and the first member, besides Luffy, Zoro has gotten into plenty of fights. He's a master swordsman, so it's most exciting when he faces off against someone else wielding a blade. These fights give him a chance to continue to prove that he can be the world's greatest swordsman, but sometimes it shows that he still has a long way to go. While he hasn't quite proven himself like he wants to, these fights still show that Roranoa Zoro is one of the best swordsmen in One Piece. <laughs> Ten, Kabeji. Kabeji is a member of the Buggy Pirates and was one of the first opponents Zoro faced during the series. At first, it seemed as if Kabeji was a pretty good match against Zoro. But it turns out it was only due to an injury he received from Buggy. Once Zoro decided to fight Kabeji seriously, it was no problem to defeat him. When viewed as a fight without taking into consideration that it was one of Zoro's first. This fight was more of a letdown than anything else. Nine, Ohm. Ohm had a troublesome sword that gave Zoro some issues initially, but he was able to overcome it. Their fight didn't last long, and it seemed like Ohm's sword was doing all the work. Ohm himself was not a good swordsman. The main bright side to this fight was Zoro showing off his 108 pound cannon and giving himself ranged potential as well. It was a decent fight. But it was clear quickly how much stronger Zoro was. 8. Hatchan. This fight was more interesting than impressive. Until this point, Zoro always had more swords than his opponent. However, Hatchan used six swords when he fought. Zoro was also incredibly injured before this fight by Myhawk. So he was not able to fight at full power. Despite the odds against him, he was able to easily defeat Hatchan once he had three swords to wield. Winning even with several points against him proves just how strong Zoro is. But didn't give him much of a challenge for his actual skill. 7. Myhawk. This fight was and still is Zoro's most crushing defeat. It was clear from their very first clash that Myhawk was leagues ahead of Zoro in both skill and power. Zoro still valiantly tried his best. But still fell short. This fight wasn't great in that Zoro did anything impressive, but it was great in showing the gap between him and the top. He now knew for sure where he stood in the world of the swordsman and could finally see the goal he was working towards. 6. Hawkins Hawkins and Zoro are both members of the worst generation, and this brief clash between them showed just how powerful they both were. Hawkins has never really been shown personally fighting before. And Zoro hasn't had to try very hard ever since the time skip. The only reason that this fight doesn't rank any higher is that there was no resolution. Zoro and Luffy were retreating away from Hawkins. So their sword fight was across large distances with the goal of capture or escape, not defeating the enemy. 5. Kamazu Killer This fight was a big surprise to viewers of the anime by how well animated it was. The stakes didn't seem that high and Killer was not an integral part of Kaido's crew. So it was shocking to see how much effort and attention went into this battle. Ever since Kid was introduced along with Killer, this face-off was a big question in fans' minds as to who would win. This question is now solved, with Zoro defeating Killer with only two swords and a borrowed weapon. <laughs> 4. Pika. Pika's battle against Zoro was fun from start to finish. 
It became obvious fairly quickly that Pika could not match Zoro in swordplay, so he had to resort to abusing his devil fruit powers. This led to Zoro cutting Pika's giant form into several pieces, a feat that could only be pulled off by some of the world's strongest swordsmen. Zoro was also finally able to show off his use of hockey. Having to rely on both armament and observation hockey. It was his toughest fight since the time skip, and it was great to see Zoro finally get serious again. <laughs> Three, Daz Bones. Daz Bones was one of the toughest opponents Zoro had faced up till Alabasta and was actually stronger than him. He could form his body parts into blades, and Zoro was initially unable to overcome this. As the fight progressed, Zoro dug deep and was finally able to do something only the best swordsmen are capable of. He was able to slice steel. This fight was not only an intense one. But Zoro was finally pushed to his limits and forced to improve. <laughs> 2. Ryuma Thriller Bark gave Zoro one of his most interesting opponents, an undead samurai. This fight was great for several reasons. Zoro had the chance to acquire a new legendary sword. Which only strengthens his arsenal. The attitude of both fighters was also that of two great swordsmen that knew their opponent was skilled as well. This led to a fight that was not just fun to watch, but also enjoyable for Ryuma and Zoro as well. In the end, Zoro left the better swordsman and with a new blade. <laughs> 1. Kaku Zoro's fight against Kaku was easily his best. It switched between serious and fun, with Usopp even becoming a sword for Zoro to wield at one point. Kaku was also a great fighter and pushed Zoro to his absolute limits. In order to beat him, Zoro had to break out a technique that he hadn't used before this fight or at any time since. He called it Ashura, and it made him go from wielding three swords to nine. This is more blades than anyone has wielded at the same time in the series, and the power he gained from it was overwhelming. 